Good morning. Welcome to Krishna's class. We continue from where we left yesterday. In fact, we were searching for the class of functions who could be possibly <coughs> represented as the difference of two increasing functions. So that such functions would be uh, differentiable almost everywhere. And we have hit upon this idea of what is called the functions of bounded variation. Now we explore this. Now we also define a, the following. Uh, in the last lecture, we introduced the so called total variation function. Now we are going to explore the properties of this function. So well, let us recall the total variation functions. Okay. So let sub interval of r. That means it is both close and bounded. So, let us define the following. Consider the function Okay, let f be a function of of bounded variation on a. Now consider the function defined by. X map to or rather I think we can email this problem. Total variation of F restricted to A. Now, this is a function of x. Okay. This function is called the total variation function. Now, we at the outset itself it is clear that from the definition of total variation it is clear that this is a increasing function. Okay. So <coughs> from the definition of From the definition of total variation, it's clear that
is less than or equal to a y for x this is true. therefore this is an increasing function therefore that is is <coughs> an increasing function Now we make some further analysis of this. In fact, you see that if if P is a partition of of A B and C belongs to the point A B. So point it A. <sighs> now we can induce a new partition by inducing the point C into this. In fact, we can write this as or let P1 and P2 be the partitions of P restricted to to A A C and C B. Effective. Now let us work out the variation. Now you see that the V of To provide it, of course, P contains C. So take take supremum. over such partitions on sides. then we have <coughs> then we have the Estimate the total variation. Hmm. 
then what we have is the following T V F A B is equal to T V F A C plus T V F C. And uh, a further is equal to TV F where of course A less than or equal to U less than B less than or equal to that's very easy to prove okay Write down the relations with E in it and then estimate. So that's easy to do. <coughs> and this, of course, is greater than or equal to. So we have. Now let us take. The crudest uh, <coughs> partition of say then what we have is the following This is less than or equal to if V is clear and that's equal to V of <laughs> and that that is less than or equal to TV of total variation of follows the same. 
And what is that? That's equal to TV. See, we, we use this TV F A V minus that we are using this relation. <laughs> Therefore, now we work on this. Can we push things to either side? So, if you have, you have F B plus T V A V You push this to this side and this to the other side. This is equal to, of course, this is, uh, you know, there is an inequality here. Therefore, this is greater than or equal to a few plus TV for, of course, T less than What does this mean? This means, this of course implies that fx plus <coughs> tv Increasing function. And that is another increasing function. See, why what the advantage of this increasing function is that if you add or if you subtract from it TVF AX. So, this is a monotonically increasing function. If you subtract from it TVF AX, that is already another increasing function. Therefore, Fx can be now written as the difference of these two increasing functions. So, there you are. So, let us have the this fact stated in the form of a number. <sighs> Thus, we have proved the following. This is only one side of the theorem that we are going to prove. <laughs> Let f be a f belong to is a function of bounded variation on interval. <laughs> This is the following explicit expression.
has the difference of two increasing factors. <laughs> Two functions, namely You see that uh, this is an increasing function and this is also an increasing function. So, we have successfully uh, expressed the given function of bounded variation as the difference of two increasing functions. So, our task is done. Now, the natural question that you ask is, Suppose a function can be expressed as the difference of two, two increasing functions. Does it mean that it is a function of bounded variation? So, one side we have proved that every function of bounded variation can be expressed as the difference of two increasing functions. And what we proved here is that this is an increasing function that is fx plus dbax is an increasing function for x belonging to ab. Okay, if you want, you can call it uh, uh, gx and hx. <sighs> So, the question that you ask at this stage is, suppose f is, f can be expressed as the difference of of two increasing functions. Is f a function of bounded variation? F a function of bounded variation on the problem. This is the question that we would like to ask. <sighs> now, right now, we have what we have proved is that every function of bounded variation can be expressed as the difference of two uh, <coughs> increasing functions. Is the converse true? Okay. If the converse is true, then what we get is a very nice characterization of functions of bounded variation in terms of what are called increasing functions. Yes, then 
we would have a nice characterization of of functions of power distribution. Now that's a wonderful result. If that is possible, we will call that a finished case. Now there is uh, an equivalent way of telling what a function of bounded variation is. Okay. So let us. The answer is yes. And we have the the characterization theorem. So the characterization theorem is known as Jordan's theorem. <sighs> this is what is called characterization of a characterization of functions <laughs> of all So let us state the theorem now. Statement of the theorem. It's a nice simple result. I think the difficult part we have already done. Now it is relatively easier for the theorem for the other side of the or prove the other side of the theorem. Okay, so let us do that. Let me first state the theorem. Very landmark theorem. Because if you if you look at the way mathematics is developed, we will define something and identify a set a, a particular class of objects. Then of course to understand that object, those or that collection of objects, you would go for other necessary and sufficient conditions if possible identifying this class so that you get another way of, in which the such functions can be different. So, so let us make the statement. Each of bounded variation uh, on the compact interval. AB if and only if this is a characterization, it is a difference of two and three situations.
that's the statement of the theorem. Uh, clearly, you see that the the expression of such functions is not unique. It's obvious. <sighs> Once you add a constant function to this breakup, you already obtained. Okay. That is then to see that get another increase. Okay. And both the functions, the corresponding functions are increasing functions, and their difference is obviously the same function. Okay. So that's easy to see that this is not unique. So let us prove this. The difficult part we have already let f belong to the class of bounded value for functions of bounded variation on the interval a. We have already shown that Plus or rather minus and both these are increasing functions. And so we have proved one part of the theorem. So we have proved. the forward implication. That means f function of bounded variation on the compact interval a b, then it is the difference of two increasing functions. Now we prove the converse. That is this implication. <coughs> so let well both.
Now we claim that we prove that f is a function of bounded. So let us compute this. Prove this as Maybe. <laughs> now let us work out this. Now the variation of f with respect to p is equal to <sighs> this is equal to uh, G XI minus minus 1 minus uh, minus 1 this is the term. Now we can write this as less than or equal to <sighs> plus <sighs> <laughs> Minus one. One more step in between this can be written as change the sign. So it is the sign change here. So if you want, you can write one more step. Okay. <laughs> no, it's okay. Now we write this as C. Both G and H are increasing functions. 
therefore what you have this is equal to sigma i equal to 1 to k we have removed the, the modulus sign because g is an increasing function plus sigma k So, we have used that both g and h are increasing functions. So, the Therefore, what do we have? Now you see that the sum of this would become simply GB. Therefore, this is equal to GB minus GA plus HB minus now, this is true for any partition of A that you choose. Okay. And you see that this side is independent of the partition that you choose. That means we have the following that is bounded by. Which is independent of P. What does this mean? This implies the total variation of F. This is bounded by bounded by finite because these are increasing functions on the compact interval and they are finite, therefore, this is finite. F belongs to so we have uh, uh, proved that <coughs> that being able to express a function as a difference of two increasing functions imply that that particular function is a function of bounded variation or and the other part we have already proved therefore this is an, both necessary and sufficient. It's a beautiful theorem by Jordan. So simple, but <coughs> the difficult part we have. Now we make a remark here. <coughs> Note that.
<coughs> such an expression as the difference of <coughs> increasing functions is not unique. That's easy to see because all that you need is you already constructed a expression of f as the difference of two increasing functions. Add to each of them a constant function. Then you see that the resulting functions are also again uh, increasing functions and the constant that you have added would just cancel. Okay. Yeah. So, that gives the proof of the Jordan theorem. Now, we give a corollary. Remark. The expression of <clears throat> as the difference of of two increasing functions is called a Jordan decomposition of f. The second one. So there are several Jordan decompositions possible for a function. That's what he says. Now we look at the consequence of this or the positive outcome of this. <clears throat> this characterization leading towards our interest of differentiability. Okay. Right. So, we have the following problem. Let where AB is a compact interval, etc., etc. Then Yes, differential almost everywhere, almost everywhere on the open interval AB. And <laughs> F derivative is integrable over there are two state statements of this. 
Now, one part is very simple, or both the parts are very simple. Now, give the proof. Very simple. F equal to minus C H. This implies G and H are F is differentiable almost everywhere because because G and H are differentiable almost everywhere being uh, being increasing functions and differentiation is a is a linear operation that is f derivative equal to g derivative minus h derivative almost everything uh, this is the proportion <coughs> Now we have some estimates of the integrals. Okay. Some upper estimates of these integrals of G derivative and H derivative. Earlier we have shown that. is bounded by g a so also integral a to b h derivative is bounded by <coughs> simplifies integral of a to b f derivative is equal to integral a to b g derivative minus h derivative which is bounded by F derivative is so that completes the proof of the corollary. It's a very nice result because we have now the the F, not only F derivative exists almost everywhere but it is also integrable over the interval. So, I think that's a place where we can 
possibly stop and before i conclude maybe i can give a visual representation sin x the function sin x as the as the difference of two increasing functions because that will give you I mean it is not we already proved that such things exist but it's nice to see how these constructions do work okay I take the function over the interval 0 to 2 pi. The function sin x is given by The graph of the function is this, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4, this is 5. <laughs> so the function is, you see the graph of the function is Roughly of this. It's uh, not too. You can hold it off nicely. They have nice functions. See, we need functions, so you cannot have sharp corners. Any. This is the graph of the function. A bit more. Now, what we observe is that on the interval 0 to pi by 2, the function is an increasing function. Okay. Therefore, you see that TVF. TVF on the interval 0 to pi by 2 will be this, this itself. Okay. From there on, how is it going to look like? Okay. Now you see that it is monotonically decreasing on the interval pi by 2 to 3 pi by 2. Therefore, when you take the 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 total variation on the interval starting from here so we will be having uh, let, me just, let me just mark it here. Okay. so I have two here mark three mark and four mark kind of, yeah. okay <clears throat> now what happens is that if you compute the total variation of f on the interval 0 to 3 pi by 2, where there is on a portion it is increasing, on the other portion it is increasing. What happens is this part will start, you reflect it along the line y equal to 1. Okay, reflect this branch along the line y equal to 1 and adjoin that. To this. So, this is what you end up with. This is the reflection of this branch. Okay. Now what more? You have to add another another increasing part. Okay. And you will see that this turns out to be 
So you have to go from here. So it will be so that you can easily work out. Okay. So this is going to be. So this is going to represent what is called what is called the graph of P V. <sighs> Yeah. Where fx is equal to sin x. Okay. So you see that it's a monotonically increasing function, or it's, it's an increasing function. Now we have to explore what is this when you add fx to it. Okay. When you add fx to it, you will see that you have to add this branch and add fx to it. fx is the same branch, so it is going to be twice that. Okay, so it will be something like this. I will use another curve to mark. So this is going to be this is going to be another curve. Okay. And then you see that this power portion gets cancelled by this effect. Therefore, up to this, now you are going to have the constant function. And uh, from there on, you are going to have the So this is actually PV F A X plus. Now you see both this uh, what is called the pink colored graph and the yellow colored graph both are monotonically increasing functions and you can easily check that their sum would give you the oh, sorry their difference is going to give you the function okay so that's the breakup for that okay so that's a good uh, that's only for your visual perception of what exactly is the breakup of a function of bounded variation now, next time I will make some remarks on some examples and then our objective is, see if you look at this part, the estimates that you have on G prime and H prime are all in the form of inequalities and we have already seen situations where probably the strict inequality may prevail. Okay? Therefore, what we are looking for is integral of f has to be equal to the integrals of this. Right? We want equality of this type. Think possibly I would put a bar here to be careful. Okay. Put a bar there. So you have essentially less than all. And that's what I have. Okay. Right. What I what I am looking for is the equality. Okay. Will the equality hold? So what is the value of this integral? This is what we ask. So is it true for all functions of bounded variation? You can write integral a to the derivative uh, equal to something, or you get only an 
upper bound for that that we will see in the in our next lecture but we need some more work to do we have to introduce a new class of functions namely what are called the, the absolutely continuous functions which are probably more restrictive than the functions of bounded variation so let me wind up for the day thank you very much that was nice